Hello all and welcome to a video, hopefully, which will be fairly educational. Is how to install heated seats into your MG ZS. For this I've already taken the seat out of the car. I wouldn't really recommend doing it in situ because some of the parts you need to get to would be very awkward. So, without further ado, let's uh, strip it down. I might have to move the cat out from underneath it first. Hello. Right, so, apologies in advance for the fact that it's pretty dark in it, so I've got my torch on. Hopefully you can see what I need to do. I've inverted the seat, so what you're looking at is along the side. There's a screw there. That'll need to be undone. Under here is a series of clips, which is actually different on the driver one. It's actually just on one long strip. Passenger one is a series of hog rings which goes about there, 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 there. But hey, yeah, something new. Here is another short strip you have to take off. And across the bottom, or the back of the seat, is a series of hog rings which will need to be removed as well. You will also have to remove this connector. Towards the back of the seat, you've got these straps which hold that down. They simply hook off. You can move that out of the way. You have one screw hidden away there and another screw there. You can see how this wire here goes into the back, probably for the airbag, I can guess, don't really know. There's also another screw underneath that cap, which you'll have to take off. You can take this off, but on the passenger side, or driver's side, sorry, no, this is the driver's seat. I didn't take it off the passenger one, so I'm not going to do it again this time. I simply wobble around it. One thing you'll find beneficial is if you have a sacrificial screwdriver, do that to it. It's a great levering tool for these clips. You can probably buy a tool like it, but I'm from Lincolnshire and anyone else from Lincolnshire will understand that us people from here don't like buying things, would rather make it. So that's it, you just hook it underneath and just give it a lift and it'll normally pop out, but the only thing is I'm doing this one handed, so you just have to believe me. So there you can see, that's now released. It's actually quite damp under there. These are salvaged seats, so I'm suspecting they've been outside for a bit. But I can soon dry them out, it's no big, no big issue. Obviously down the bottom one, and they're down there. You've got one on the side, which you just have to hook off. Again, I can't do it because I'm holding my phone. It looks like that's it for that side. I don't think there's any more. Whereas on this side, there's on a hog ring. Top and bottom. Just like those at the top of the back of the seat. So all you've got to do there is if you if you've got a hog ring tool, fantastic, you can undo them. But 
if you're from Lincolnshire like me and don't have a hovering tool and can't be bothered to make one I uh, cut them off or get a pair of pliers in there but they do come out fairly easily and I re put them on with cable ties which is a nice little hack I've actually discovered that bottom one which I've just released there is in two parts so we're going in there as well just so you can just see it through that square cut out there look where my finger is that just loops over that rod there it's released on there that one's took off base is took off just leaves these hoverings right there we have it hoverings are taken off there an interesting sticker in Chinese Japanese some language and they're took off on the side you can see it's quite damp actually now we're going to take these screws off, what we talked about earlier. Up there. Up there. And down there. <laughs> when I find it. Put it to one side. Not forgetting, screw under that cap. Quite a bit tighter than the rest for some reason. So going back down to the bottom here, you'll see that actually loops over. So it needs to be slid forward somehow. There we go. So you can just see I've released that from the clip. If my camera focuses where it should be. Uh, no. There we go. So that metal bit there used to be sandwiched in between there with the screw going through it. I've now released it. So it gives me that little bit more leeway to sort the cushion cover out. Back round this side, now the screw's taken out, the cover's come off. This panel here will simply remove one way or another. A hidden clip somewhere? No, nope. just comes straight off. Look, I was making a mountain out of a molehill. Right, once you got this far, you can see all that's coming loose, loose at the bottom, loose at that side as well. You're about ready to start peeling it back, which is quite a nice stage. It's not that easy to film. So it's Velcro on there, which is nice and easy. And it's Velcro on this side as well. So you get to the first sort of line, which is there, that sort of line there, is attached on a series of three hog rings. You just see one there, another one there, another one of that in there. So they need to be snipped off at the next step. See, I've just peeled it back. 
you'll be able to do all this this step yourself just sides aren't actually held on with anything other than the clips at the bottom so they'll just fold back same with this side a little bit more awkward with the trim so you might just have to push the cushion back or lift the trim out of the way a bit but they do come out it's not hard at all so that'll actually fold all the way back there now I've now removed the three hog rings across the front on this little retaining bar that also shows the velcro material and the hooks it would be nice if the whole thing was like that but I don't know how well it would work obviously I'm not a trimmer there's probably a good reason for that so once you get to this stage you can pull it back a little bit further and you can see another hog ring there same on the other side just there there's about four or five of them in a row maybe three I can't remember I'll tell you in a minute down that seam there and that seam there so you've got to remove them next right so I've only done I think it's three down that side and three down that side and if you've got to this stage well done if you can do this stage you can do it all because you've done everything you need to do now you've just got to keep doing it and there is the seat cover lifted hog ring, hog ring, hog ring same again on that side some funky script at this point on the other seat I didn't undo the final three but I just didn't feel I needed to so at this point, because this seat's a bit damp, obviously you won't experience this if you're doing your own seats, but if you are buying seats from scrap vehicles like what I do, you may well find them damp. So I'm going to spend 15-20 minutes with a hair dryer, just drying this out, because for obvious reasons, putting heated seats in puts an electric current through it. And I'm not an electrician. But water and electrics aren't the best mix in the world, especially when you're sat on it. So uh, I'm going to dry it out before I put it in. Be back in a moment. So I've dried it all out. Obviously you can ignore that step because you won't need to do it. The next part is this little strip along the back. Because obviously it's still hog ringed on here. But you've released it from behind. So you've got to either pull it through, like that, in fact I can show you a lot, pull straight through a lot, and then there's the other side, so you can still see it's hog ringed on, and now you're ready to actually physically mount the seat base, or the electric path anyway. You've just got to pull that bit back because it makes it easier to run the wire. Again, funky sticker. So that's the heating pad. Plug on there for the loom. You can see it's self adhesive down the side. You've got wire in. Obviously, red goes to that side positive, that goes to this side negative. There, you'll see there's a little sort of box. That's actually a thermometer in this kit, which is quite nice. So you can have it as two settings warm or hot and that little thermal cutout ensures the pad doesn't overheat and it doesn't burn your bum or your back but in this case it would be my bum this is actually a brick part kit i'll show you the box in a minute it's designed for land rovers but i'm going to use it in my mg because i've used this kit in my mg tf i've fitted it to my tf not from at all absolutely love it fantastic bit of kit gets nice and toasty in the winter and there'll be a top down motoring and that is the sole reason why i'm putting it in the zs because it's just luxury and i just like it so why not 
So that's the basics of the pad. It's all car, I think it's carbon, graphite or something like that. You don't really need to know. Long and short of it is you can cut it to size, but you're only allowed to cut, I think it's about 25 centimeters of it, which shortens it quite a lot. And you can also cut a 15, no, 10 centimeter gap in the middle. But I don't need to in this case, and you don't need to ever back. But in case you're fitting it to a different car, you can chop and change it, but always look at the instruction manual for the heated pad. Because some you can, some you can't. This particular kit you can, others may say no, so you just got to research what one looks best for your car. You will see my little way around that strip there in a moment. All you essentially do is just open that hole up a little bit more of a knife so it comes to this edge a bit and same with that side just come further that way you have to knife the foam so you expose more of that metal rod that the whole ring goes around that you're going to get a cable tight to the middle one you lose it it's no biggie it doesn't make any difference whatsoever because the integral strength of this bar holds it into shape anyway. So I'm going to go and put this pad in situ. I'm going to show you sort of roughly where I put it. Um, I also like to take a little chunk out of foam for this little bit here. Because obviously when you sit in it, you will know that you sat on a hard sensor. So if you dig a little bit of the foam out... Looks like that will sort of recess in further then. As you sit in it, you won't notice it. I did that on my TF and I can't even tell they're there. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to go and do that bit now. It's tricky for me to show it, but it is obvious when I show you it already there as to what I've done. So that's it laid roughly in the position it will be. What I do as well is I do tuck it in there. So you sort of fold it into the groove. I'll show you it all in a minute. That will fold around to the end. Those bits here will just tuck into the channel. And this sort of plastic will retain them in place. Obviously they're self adhesive anyway. But the more sort of pinning down points you can put on them the better. And so at this point, obviously you get the thermometer. Or temp sensor. You sort of imagine where it is. I just know it's about there peel it back that's where you just take a little chunk of the foam out so just stand in half a little chunk of the foam out put it all back you may decide to take the hogging out the middle on the actual cover might give you a little bit better access to actually run the cable through but I'll see I'll see about that as I do it I normally run the cable through first before I actually stick it down so that's this bit it's taking shape now. Right, so there's my little hole I've made. Just for the sensor to sit in. Works absolutely perfectly. I've put my wire through. I've ended up actually taking that hog ring out. So I just didn't feel it would be right going underneath that metal bit. So I'm going in between the metal bit and the plastic. So it's not going to do the wire as much damage. So I'd recommend doing that. Ignore my previous comment. Because I can't edit these videos because I ain't got a clue how you do it. <laughs> Alright, so that's the heating pad actually stuck down now. I've not done a video showing me peeling all the sticky back off because it's self-explanatory. So you can see how that sort of pushes down into the seat more. So when your bum sat on it, you won't actually notice it there. And the most important bit is I've done a recess down here, like a guttering channel. That will allow you to keep the profile of the seat looking correct. So you've just got to fold it down and stick it back down the channel and up the channel on the other side. Doesn't always stick very well to the ends, but you can pop a bit of tape, a bit of glue, anything like that, it'll hold it down. So this next stage is fairly important. Obviously, because you can't get to this hog ring very well. I just put a little knife mark through the actual foam and still extend that opening. 
you can get a cable tie around there. Same goes with this side. I've not done such a nice job with the knife clearly, but it will work. And as you've done that, these holes won't line up. She's just elongate them ever so slightly. But all importantly, don't cut right way to the end, because that keeps the strength. It's absolutely fine. I've done it with my TF before. And I did it with the other seat. And you can't tell the difference. That way, you're maintaining the heat all the way. So you're not having to cut a section out here, losing the heat. You're still going to have to run the main power feed down here anyway. So you might as well just keep the heat in there. For the sake of losing a hog ring, it's, it, it's not worth it. So I'd much rather have a toasty bomb. And that is it. You have put the first heating element in. Well done. That will just stick down with the rest of it. It's fine. So the first element is in. Now it just becomes a case of refitting everything as you took it off. You can either reuse the hog rings. I do not because I don't have the hog ring tool. I'll be using cable ties and if you're interested in my cable tie method I'll be showing you it in a moment how to put it all back together. I've got these very thin cable ties which I don't know where I got them from to be honest they are just in my toolbox. I've got a few more here various colours and lengths so between that lot this seat came back together. Here's my cable tie technique. So what you do, where the hog rings used to be, you feed a cable tie through. You always note how the ratcheting part of the cable tie is on the outer edge of all of it. Just makes it easier. So you pull your material up, loop it through the hole, which is already where the hog ring would have been. So you loop that through there, zip it up. And because you've gone that way round, the sort of fly lead, the end, that end, is always towards the edge of the seat, which remains open, so you can at least trim the ends off, nice tidy installed. So you can see in there, just looped it through, started pulling it through, and just snip it up tight. Which I can't do with the mould on my phone. So you just have to believe me again on that one. So you can see there, I've done the second one now, making fairly good progress. One thing is I will personally use longer cable ties next time because it has been an absolute faff trying to fiddle about with those two. So longer cable ties for next time. However, one little tip is I've done two on this side. I'm going to do the two on that side now next just to pull it up evenly. That way you run less of a risk in my eyes of creasing anything. So I finished the right hand side in, the right hand side of the seat and you can see that final cable tie brackets, hog ring, whatever you want to call it and why you have to extend that hole slightly you can see it's there it's got to be looped through um, there you go look, I managed to do it on camera that's it and you just sort of need to do the cable ties all the way up, keep them loose so they act like a hog ring so it keeps them like that you see, perfect. So that's it finally all hog ringed in place. I've put a bit of super glue across the front 
just to keep it down a bit. Don't have to, but the cover would hold it anyway. So now it's just a case of pulling it back taut, uh, tucking the sides in on this side, and so you've got to loop round the seatbelt buckle on there, and the, the sides on hog rings, just two there and there. There as well. The other side on the clips, so I'll show you how they all work in a moment. So, working at the front of the seat, just got to guide that into the channel there, push it back on itself, and you'll push it in. And you'll click, bend it round. There we go. So that has mated perfectly across the whole length. That's the front done. That side is on hog rings. So you just pull it down, zip tied up. This side's going to be a little bit more tricky, but I'll show you. Right. The screwdriver, the point is thick. You can see. There we go, that one there is on. It's a really awkward. Still got to locate that one. It's a fiddle, but it's all doable. See there, they're both located onto the rail. It's actually a lot easier than I thought. But there is one at the back, just there. So I'm going to have to relocate that. Alright, so we flipped it back on its side. That's the back of the base which I've just pulled back to, to that, that part there, which I'm just tugging on. I'll make sure it's nice and taut to get all the creases out. Then bring it back round to this side. Then you just have to make a couple of slits where the hog rings used to be, just to put cable ties. Obviously you've got the heating element wire, which is now loose at this stage. Always goes to the same side as the seatbelt buckle. In this case, it's the side on the floor, so I'm going to leave that down there. That'll make it nice and easy when the rear backrest will come out of there as well. So I'm going to uh, cable tie hog ring this back up. I'm going to do the side as well, and I'm going to call that it for a day, and I'll do the back tomorrow. But on the video, it's going to be in about a minute and a half. See you then. So, I've cable tied on the side. I thought about making a slip there and cable tying it as well, but I don't think it needs it. That's all holding this side nice and taut. The front's all clipped on there. The sides all clipped on. I've relocated the plastic into the screw hole. I've not put the screw in yet. But obviously you need to screw that back up. I probably won't do a video of me screwing that back up. You can it's self-explanatory, I'll let you do that. This side's clipped in. If you can see, you can just see through there, the second part of that one is clipped in as well. Round the back. All zip tied on in four places where the hog rings used to be. So I'm now all set to do the backrest. But I'm going to do that tomorrow, like I said in the previous clip. I've had a long day at work already as it is. Finally finish this one off. I'm going to call that a night. Right, so you've done the base. As you can see, Milo has made himself at home. It's now time to move on to stripping back. Which is very similar to doing the base. Let's get cracking. Off. 
So first things first, you have to remove the airbag plug. It's on this yellow wire. Have to remove it because it goes through the seat cover. This is underneath the flap, which we took off in yesterday's video. It's also worth noting I've not put the screws back in there, or there the cover's not actually on at all on that side. Here, along this strip here, see where the colour change is between the two different materials, is the strip which secures the back part of the back to the front part of the back. That's my only way of explaining it, which is a long strip of plastic. I wonder if I can do it whilst... There you go, look, you can just see it. That just wants to be removed. It will actually go if you just pull it like that. But I'm going to use my little bent tool just to slide it in there and hook it open. And you'll see. Right, so what I've done here is just levering that corner. And you can see how there's like a U shaped channel on the back part. Almost like a, a hook or a J shaped channel on this part. So the two hook together and clip in quite well. It's a good really good design really, very basic but works well. So once you've got a little little bit out, you can just continue to work it back all the way along until it all comes off. Very simple. Also remove the wire. I do that just by nipping the clips in and pulling the whole thing out. That one was just clipped into that clip there, that hole there, and the one clips into there, and the other one clips onto the base. Very simple. So at this point, throw the wire out of the way. You can then start to pull the base up a little bit until you've come to your first set of hog rings. I'll turn the seat over so you can see them a little bit. So your first set is going to be in that recess there. No, it's not going to focus on it. But you right, so at this stage, you pulled them up to just sort of halfway up on the bolster. Probably a quarter of the way up instead. And the bolsters are quite firm on these seats, so you will have to sort of push it down a bit as you pull it up just to ease on the job a bit. So you can see you've got your first two hog rings there and there. They need to come off as you do with every other hog ring. And then you'll find there's going to be an extra one there and an extra one up at that end. So it's just effectively four along the bottom. Later, you will have to modify this strip here just to run the wire through. Again, I'll show you that. It's a very simple mod. You just have to cut a little gap to run the wire through. But, so we'll get those hog rings removed. And I'll move on to the next bit. Yep, so once you've done those four, you can pull it back a little bit further like I've done here. Then you'll see another couple. You've just got to keep going really. Keep going. Eventually you'll come across the middle ones along there. They also need to be taken off. But you don't need to come too far up here. I think you can just go one further. And then you can slide it up. Again. Right, so you've removed all the clips in the channel. That now leaves this strip. Very much like the strip on the base. There's three hog rings again. They need to be removed. But you will not be replacing these. I used a blob of super glue once I put the heating pad in. But once you remove these, 
you are almost ready to install the heating pad. You don't need to go any further. So I'll do that now. So here we have the back base or back heating pad. This is the off cut I used on the passenger seat. So I'm going to just lay that on the top and I will cut it to suit. So that's going to be trimmed down to there. Again, like I said earlier in the video, you can trim these pads. Some pads you can't trim, so check with the manufacturer before you do so. As with the front or the base part, the back has the thermometer as well. So you're going to have to do the same, same job. Cut a small hole and you're also going to have to cut a little groove down there for the cable to sit in. Otherwise you'll feel it on your back. So move that out of the way. I've removed these clips and you can now slide it all the way up to the back. So you don't need to worry about the rest. It will actually go right up there. As my hand is doing so. So once you've got this far you've, you've, you've done it. You are happy days. So I'm going to trim that down now. Don't need to show you how to do it. Um, but for argument's sake, I will measure that. Just so that if you are following this for an MGZS, you know exactly how much to cut off this exact kit if you do copy me exactly. Some people might do. Other people might think, oh, this is a rubbish video. I'm going to totally ignore him and not bother. But I will measure that now. And I will tell you the measurement. So, magic measurement, it's four and a half inches, or if you're younger than 40, 11.4 centimetres. So trim that off, peel the sticky back off, stick it on. Obviously don't forget to do your cutting for the temperature sensor and the wire. Just so you can see, I made a slit there. Just so you can run the cable through, so you don't feel it on your back. And underneath the temp sensor, there's a nice square hole, so that will sit perfectly in there. So I'm quite pleased with how well I've cut that hole, considering. So, next step, trimming that end off to the same length as that. Peel the sticky back off and slide it in. Right, so, heating pad is stuck down. I've just got to feed that cable through, which I'll do that now in fact. So I'll just tuck away through the back. Just a bit awkward. There you go. Tuck the wire through the through the slit. There you go. Beautiful. With this, obviously because you can't actually adjust it like I can on the base. See how it's just it's the same width as the heating pad, but you can't make the heating pad narrower. So all I do, little line of glue, whole length, little line of super glue, and it'll be absolutely fine. Then it's just a case of using the cable ties as hog rings like we did before. So you've got two on this side. There's one there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna lose that one. Don't need it. One there one there and again there's one hidden away under there now but I'm not going to use it it's fine so that's all tucked away beautifully tucked up there as well it goes all the way into the corner on my little measurements you can actually feel it just in the corner if you're really picky but it's in cool let's get uh, the cable ties out and uh, slowly pull it back you pull it back, get to the first one, cable tie, pull it back a bit more, second one, again on the same, on the opposite side. So I'm probably going to do up to about here before my next video. I might go the whole length. It's really simple. I trust you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. It's easy. One thing I did forget about. It's just making this modification on this edge, so it's just down the bottom, so it goes over the wire. So you just got to take a little snip out of it, 
There you go, look. You can still see, you can hog ring either side of it. No problems, no drama. Straight on there. So you can see, got all the cable ties laid out. Taking a couple of minutes. One thing that does help is if you get cable tie, see how it's just bent the end of it? You just double the end back on itself. You can just push it into the foam just beside the metal retaining rod there. If you push it down far enough, the end will be bent. It will actually sort of spring out. It gives you something to grab onto. And you can just pull it through. And have a little hack. So, progress empty down, easing the cushion cover down as you go. And it's very, very simple. The back, I normally have done in about half hour. Base takes longer, but the back's about half an hour. So, when you're at this stage, obviously you've progressed your way down. You put a little line of glue across there, that's all drying. You've done the rings or cable ties down the side. Obviously you missed the corner out, but that's going to be held down with this little plastic bar anyway. You've made your cut, so obviously that's going to go either side of the wire. The wire is, as well as hidden away in the foam. We'll put a little bit of glue as well in there just to stop it from possibly splaying open. I doubt it will be, or will ever do anyway, but peace of mind. Now I've got the last two bits here. They are very loosely tied on, just to give it a bit of shape, so you can see in the uh, video. You just have to keep pulling it down ever so slightly and it's self-explanatory, you know what you're doing. Right, so I'm just going to zip these last two up tight. Cut the tails off, and when you're finished, you always spin the cable tie round so that the tail, or if there is any tail, points back into the foam so you don't get it sticking up through the cushion cover. That's the final two in situ. You can see I've just span the uh, cable tie round when I've actually cut the end off so there's no ratcheting part facing forward. I've glued that back up. And we are ready to uh, feed this sort of cloth part back through the gap. And obviously pull it down on the sides as well. See, we are almost finished. Right, so you've done that last stage, which is tucking the bottom lip Through the gap. Really happy about that heat sensor's gone, I can't even feel it. So once you push that through the gap, obviously it'll be coming out on this side, you will find your heat and wire. Obviously again, it needs to come out at the same side as the seatbelt buckle, so that's going to be the drive tunnel. You can see obviously these two clips which you took off to start with, which is your final step. But before you do your final step, you want to be feeding this airbag wire back through the slip, placing it to one side. You can even put it in the clips as well at this point if you want to, because you're done with it. But I would like to put that in right at the end. A little satisfying click finishes the last bit of the job. So, also one thing you need to do is, whilst pulling the cover down, ensure you get it right to the bottom so you'll feel it the edge of the moulding the one is just on the edge of the foam and on the opposite side I'll show you you also have to just push it underneath this trim that actually does sit like that. I've kept on the other one. That's fine. Then you're ready to do the final clip up. Then you've just got to put plastic trims back into place. 
and all the screws for these bits. It's very tricky to show it on the phone, but you can understand the principle of this. So obviously you've got two clips there, you've got to push that into there, fold it back, and it should just snap together. But obviously doing it one-handed is a bit tricky. Again, just believe me, it goes back together. You'll see it in a minute when I do. There we go, so it's all slid back together. Just to find a little nip. There you go, nice reassuring click. And that's all nice and sturdy back together. Heating element cable coming out. Tuck that away to one side. Obviously, the two plugs need to be near one another for the loom. Because on the actual loom, I might do a video showing it later, at a later date. There are the two seat plugs, see them right next to one another. I'll show you a bit about the loom while I'm here. Obviously that's the uh, relay control box. And the uh, actual switch button. So L for left, R for right, tap once for high power, tap again for low power, just the little rocker switch, tap at either side. Very simple. You've got four wires to wire up. Black open-ended ring terminal is unearthed. A fat red wire is a permanent battery feed. Small red wire is an ignition feed, and the yellow wire there is illumination. With my MGTF, I couldn't be bothered to find an illumination, um, although there is a ring next to the cigarette lighter, which I thought about after I'd installed it, so I might move it to there one day if I'm that bothered. But I simply tied the illumination wire to the thin red wire which obviously will illuminate the switch with your ignition so the switch will stay on you can find it in the dark it doesn't have to be on with your lights permanent earth permanent life and just route the cables obviously you've got a fuse in there I think it's a 15 amp or 10 amp one of the two but very simple bit of kit plug and play and final step is to put the uh, pinching screws in there underneath the cover there one at the back underneath the cover there and one there so that's the four screws finish it off by locating the little cap There we have it. Ready to uh, fit to the vehicle. Obviously, make sure the airbag wire is all secure. And the final little straps which hold the flap down. So what you should be left with is a nice seat which looks like it hasn't been tampered with. All ready to fit to the vehicle. Thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure. I do quite enjoy this. That's the first thing I've ever made a video for, so hopefully it's been educational, interesting, or you could be fed up with my boring voice. I don't really care. But thank you. And if I can be asked, I might make a video showing the install into the actual car. 
I mean, there's only two plugs and four bolts per seat. But some of you might be interested in it. And I might make a video of how to wire them in. But I would always consult a vehicle electrician if you're unsure yourself. But me being me, I'll get it to work one way or another. But thank you very much again for watching. It's been a pleasure. Over and out.